Hello and welcome to this new post, new video rather. And we'll learn how to create and implement and use Java Beans in a Java web application. So that starts with the definition of a Java Bean. What is a Java Bean? A Java Bean is a Java class, a plain old Java class as we should call it, with properties. What are properties? Properties are specially named methods starting with get or set and they're used for getting or setting values get returns a value while set stores it or updates an already stored value so let us start with creating a bean now I'll start here. I've already got a package, my beans, and I'll create a bean over here. Create a Java class and name it book. So we're creating a Java bean called book. Now, this is the bean. Beans are instantiated automatically using use bean tags and they are somewhat HTML like. So, first of all, you must ensure that the bean has a default constructor because you are not allowed to pass constructor parameters into the constructor. So we'll store just the book name for the starters, public string book name. Now I'll create a constructor, public book and we'll set book name equal to not given now to access the value I need to create a get method and for setting the value I need to create a set method I can write it down or have NetBeans do it for me insert code getter and setter Insert code, getter and setter, book name, generated. See, I've got a method get book name which returns the book name over here, and I've also got a set book name which returns the currently stored, which stores the currently which stores the book name given as a parameter. So get book name would return the book name and set book name will accept a parameter and allow it to be set. Now, this is enough. Let's start a new JSP page. JSP. I'll call it book bean use initiative. We have created a skeleton JSP page. I'll title it book bean demo. Run it first of all. It will be live in the browser very soon. And there you are, it's starting up. And we're waiting for it to show up in the browser. It's loading now. I'll close the previous window. The title is Book Base Book Bean Demo, and it's showing Hello World as I wrote it there. H1. 
Now we'll instantiate the beam. JSP use beam. We need to give an ID to it. So I'll call it B1. Then you need to provide either the class or the type. There are differences and we'll discuss them soon. So we'll write my beans dot book. Now this essentially creates a object called B1 and stores it in the current page. Equivalent code would be my beans B1 is equal to new my beans dot book. That's the thing that is being done via this use being tag that we wrote just now. Now, I can use the get part of it to show it on the screen. JSP get property name name would be the id that we provided in the previous statement and now we'll have to get the property so the property out here is book name the naming convention needs to be understood clearly over here this is called get book name so what you do is you capitalize the letter just after the get or the set and while using it as a property you remove the capitalization that's about it now refresh it not given because by default the book name has not been given and we are getting the default value how can I change the value I'll have to use a JSP set property tag. JSP set property name is equal to B1 like before. Then property equal to book name as we well. saw and value equal to basic C. That's the book name that we'll be having. Now, I'll use the get property tag once again. Watch it in. The first time round, it's not given because that is the default value and after we have set the value, it became basic C, which is the value that we gave here. Okay. There are two ways for instantiating a bean. One is using the class as we did here. The other is using the type. What is the difference? The type basically instantiates or accesses a bean that is already stored in some container. The class actually creates one and stores it in the container. So what happens if I write type over here? We should have an error. Let's see. Mean B1 not found within scope because we never created it and that's it. Now, by default, beans are stored in the page. We can have other scopes for it and 
use it somewhere else let's say scope now as we all know there are four scopes in uh, java web application one is the page the default then we have request then we have session and application so i'll store it in the session for now scope is equal to session not a much difference in this current page it will show up as before now since this is in session i can access it from another page oh let me add another web page here and call it session b now session b I'll have to write use bean once again. JSP use bean. R is equal to B1. Class is equal to my beans dot book this is it use a get call here jsp use bean name is equal to jsp property get property name is equal to b1 and property is equal to book name as we said before book name now run this page as well so what happens we get to see the bean that was set up in the previous page this is the previous page still running and i get it on this see not given refresh this once again now write scope equal to session and it will recover the bean from the session refresh this we stored the page we stored data in the bean from the first page book bean demo and accessed it from the session bean now <coughs> this is it you create a bean what is a bean a bean is a special java class with a default constructor and functions with some specific naming this is a getter and this is a setter to use this in a bean to use it in a jsp page you use the use bean tag jsp use bean give this a name and give it a class name give it the class and scope where you want to store it by default the scope is page get property you can get the property by setting you can set the values and that's it about since it's stored in the session we could access it from another page there are other scopes now you can write html code from inside the getter method and return html formatted output see i'll put this in a h1 tag and 
this would be like this. Now let me refresh this. Not given. I'll refresh this one once again and now this will so basic C in an H1 tag. Go to view source and you can see this. H1 basic C. What else? We can put this bean inside a request or application and use them from there as well. Let's try this. Go back to the book bean use page and change the scope to request. So this is done. The bin would not be stored in a session now. It would rather be stored in the request. How to forward a request? We need to create a request dispatcher and then forward it. I'll do that. request dispatcher dispatcher is equal to request dot get request dispatcher or dispatch it to a new page that we have got to make I'll call this req dot jsp so We'll transfer it to this and access the bean from there. Dispatcher dot forward. We pass the request and the response. Make a JSP called REQ dot JSP. There you are. REQ dot JSP. I'll put this in REQ. Now we'll write the JSP use bin tag here. JSP use bin ID is equal to B1 class is equal to my beans dot book. And scope is equal to request. Now I can use the get property tag and display the value here. JSP get property name is equal to B1 and property is equal to book name. So Let's try running this page now. <clears throat> okay, this is not given. Run this here and initialize the bean. Now it's placed in the request. And being used on JSP. See, it's been forwarded here and we've got basic C running over here. So this is automatic forwarding and I opened the big book bean use page. It got transferred into the next page. 
and the bean was shown there and therefore you have got the RQ title over there we put the bean into the request scope and access it from another page you can similarly put it in the application scope so let's try that application I'll go back to the book being used GSP page and change this to application remove the request dispatcher now write the access code in application.jsp application here jsp use beam id is equal to b1 like before class is equal to my beans dot book and scope is equal to application this time there you are the spelling is wrong we'll correct it now I can write a get bean get property tag over here JSP get property name is equal to b1 and property will be book name as before and this is it run the book bean use JSP page first of all so that the bean is sent to the application scope there we are now run the access page basic C as I said before this is simply putting it into the required scope now what happens if I want to use this particular beam directly using Java code let's see if I can do this outdoor printer learn b1 dot get book name would this be allowed yes it is you can set beans inside using the same methods see let me get rid of this use bean tags and I will create a java bean by code and put this inside the application scope my beans dot book b is equal to new book and application dot set attribute b1 and I'll put the b object over here that's it this will set it in the application scope and you can access it like before there it is access it from the application scope Save. not given because we didn't set any value that can be done b dot set book name basic c like we did before I saved it now refresh this 
Refresh the original page, which will set it into the application. And now refresh this basic things available. So you must remember that JSP used in tags are essentially shortcuts for this. And you can access it directly if you want as well, like here. Bin should be used and they provide good functionality. Now, one last thing, you can have multiple properties in the bean and set them through a HTML form. Let us try. See, we got book name. Now I'll add another variable here. Price, private and price. We'll set price equal to zero in the constructor. Now create properties. We'll let that means do it for us. Getter and setter price and there you are. Things are done. Now let us create a HTML form which will also create a another function here public. String S should be capital. I'll call it gate details and simply return the book name and the price. So return book name equal to plus book name and price equal to plus price okay let's create a HTML page through which in which we'll create a form and pass the data over here I'll call it input book being used form action was equal to we're going to the book being used page, user.jsp, and method equal to get just so that we can see it. That's it. Book name, create a text box, input type equal to text. Now, be careful about the naming over here. We'll name it book name. Properties need to be named properly. Line break is minor adjustment. Then price. Input type is equal to a given number. And the name for this one would be price. Remember that you need to name the controls after the properties that are there in the JSP, in the bean rather. And now we'll need a submit button. Input type is equal to submit. Value is equal to send. And this is it.
Let's run this page. It's going to the browser now. There it is. Now we'll change the book bean demo page a bit. See, this is the book bean use.jsp and we'll use it. Book bean use.jsp. Now Let's use the use bean tag once again. JSP. Use bean. ID is equal to B1 like before. No. Scope equal to let's say session class is equal to my beans dot book. Now I'll use a set property tag JSP set property name is equal to B1. And property equal to asterisk. This will essentially take everything from the incoming request and set it in the proper places. Now, JSP get property name equal to B1, and let us display the details over here. Let's submit this here. I'll write a book name here. Advanced C. Price 123 rupees. Send this. See. The values have been sent directly. I put it here in a gateway so you can see it here. And the properties were set automatically in the beam, which saves a lot of programming effort. And this is the basis for a few frameworks that we'll be learning very soon. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it properly. Hope you loved it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.